I have only five minutes, so I'll go straight into my points. Um, within the Nile Basin, we have a very famous slogan. It's called uh, One Nile, One Family, and that's what we sing in all the countries that we go, One Nile, One Family. But it's become evident that if you don't use the Nexus approach, then you may not really realize that vision uh, of One Nile, One Family. So it's, it's very critical that uh, we have this uh, Nexus approach towards uh, issues. Um, we, we have many benefits uh, within the Nile, definitely, and we've realized that one project, whether it's a dam, it can actually create energy, it can uh, help in irrigation, can help in flood control, in industry, in food security, in health, in environmental services. So there are so many benefits that can actually uh, be derived from one project. If you choose to make it a multi-purpose project, because there are times that uh, you fail to look at the Nexus approach and you take a unilateral uh, approach whereby the project is just to aimed at providing one uh, benefit. So um, when you're looking at the Nexus approach, you cannot uh, leave out the governance issues because the governance issues are critical. Um, going through uh, the Nile and maybe what has been happening, uh, it's been clear that um, we have the governance within the Nile making the decisions but this governance need to work very closely with the scientists. Uh, we have the technocrats within the Nile Basin uh, doing wonderful work in the area of agriculture, in the area of energy, and this needs to feed into the governance so that you know we can be able to move away from uh, talking about water allocation and talking towards benefit sharing so that we look at the benefits and ask ourselves in which country, how will we be able to share these benefits that we're going to derive, but also share the costs. So it would need the scientists to step up and uh, work very closely with the policymakers so the policymakers make decisions based on science. So the transition has been currently we have the Nile Basin Initiative, which uh, through the Cooperative Framework Agreement, which we currently are in the process of uh, ratification for some countries, uh, might end up form forming a commission. So when the commission is formed, uh, if it is formed, then the issue of science will be very critical uh, and establishing the nexus between uh, all these different uh, aspects will be very critical. Uh, looking uh, at what we have now, we have so many tools that have been developed, but I just want to focus on one and just give you an example because we don't have time. We have the Nile Basin uh, Decision Support System, where, where, which has so many components uh, within it. And if you're talking about a nexus approach, I'm thinking that uh, the Nile Basin Initiative, which has the mandate, and it's a very important body, that has the mandate to get the data from the governments, uh, would be collecting this data through this system that is already formed. And then when they get this data, like let's say, for example, it's food, they get data about uh, the kind of crops being grown, the amount of water being used. So the data is actually being fed into this repository. Then you'd have the Nile Basin Discourse, where I am based, actually interacting with the farmers, interacting with the communities and finding out what is it, you know, and linking that policy that is being made at the regional level to the communities. And they're developing their own form of science which is feeding into the decision support system. But when we have now these two bodies doing this, then we have a very critical role for the scientists to come and look at this data which is already in the repository and actually make sense of it, you know. Uh, start doing the analysis and uh, make very clear evidence-based analysis which is very independent on uh, how we are going to move forward, which is supposed to inform policy. So the three are supposed to work hand in hand and if there's a disconnect, then definitely we cannot uh, be able to resolve the problem. So uh, what I would say in conclusion is that uh, allocation of scarce resources is uh, very critical and it's something that we cannot move away from. So we need to really establish what is the nexus between uh, the different uh, uh, aspects for food, energy, climate change, uh, so, so as to be able to move forward. Then the role of NBA is very critical. Uh, it receives the data uh, on our behalf. Uh, and that means that it needs to be open enough to share that data. It needs to be open data for us to be able to use it as scientists, as the civil society, as a community. Um, and we need to have a Nile Basin initiative, a Nile Basin discourse, which is the civil society arm, and also scientists who are independent. They are well respected because uh, if you 
want to do evidence-based research and you're not respected, you're not independent, no one will listen to you. Uh, accepted and institutional, uh, institutionally and scientifically so as to be able to do this. But there's definitely a gap. And when this gap is filled, we won't be talking so much about the Nile and water location and maybe the Nile and the problems facing, but we'll be talking about uh, critical issues on how we are moving forward on sharing the benefits and sharing the costs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abby, for showing us how to take the somewhat limited discussions forward in a, in a wider Nexus context. And thanks to all of the speakers here for sharing with us some glimpses and some aspects of the Nexus. It's indeed a very complex setting, but the Nile may also be an opportunity to, to tackle the complexity. There are a number of tools already available that give hope to be able to quantify, to organize and coordinate these different entries um, in a in a demand-driven manner, I would say. Well, for the sake of time, I guess we have to quit here. I may just say, um, if there was one comment from within the basin, then I would allow it. Otherwise, we move on to um, the next panel. OK, there's a comment from within the basin. <laughs> Uh, yes, no, sorry, Holger, not for you, exactly your question, but um, I, would, I would like to challenge all the panelists to, uh, to maybe give one sentence on what they think is the most urgent uh, research need with regard to the Nexus, okay. also be going beyond the Nile Basin. Okay, well, let's do it. One sentence. Quantify the trade-offs. Yes. <laughs> Understanding regional power markets. Understanding how the economics of, of the agriculture and energy from water um, feeds into those sectors. Uh, developing a model whereby the communities can actually be actively involved in science and data collection. And am I allowed to? <laughs> Are you a scientist? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Linking, that's my boss. Oh, but linking. <laughs> linking development planning to um, human securities and livelihoods. Okay, thank you. A warm applause to the entire panel. Thank you.